All set. My name is Rick Leaf. I'm chair of the Master Plan Implementation Committee. This open meeting of the Master Plan Implementation Committee is being conducted remotely pursuant to Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, an act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, signed into law on March 29th, 2023. This meeting will be conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance by members of the public will be permitted. All members of the Master Plan Implementation Committee are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The Act allows the Master Plan Implementation Committee to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. Members of the public who wish to view the live stream of this meeting may do so by going to Northborough Remote Meetings on YouTube by the link listed on the agenda. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless its participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. Now I'll call attendance for this skeleton crew that we have here tonight. Julianne Hirsch. Here. Millie Milton. Here. Ashley will be joining us late. Tracy's not here. Fran Baxter. Here. Jean Kennedy. Here. Jean Cahill, has she joined us? No. Rick Leaf is here. John Campbell will be joining late. And Jen Tolman. Here. Okay. Um, first item on the agenda was to get an update from Ashley on what's going on with the dam removal, but we'll guess defer that. Ashley said she will be joining us, so we'll wait for her to join and then bring this up a bit later on in the meeting. Um, there was an article in the local papers about a fairly significant dam removal project going on in West Boylston, a historic dam. I guess that prevented silt from getting into the Wachusett Reservoir a long time ago. Was it needed anymore? And I guess there's a project under, ongoing, under, ongoing right now to remove that dam. So maybe uh, when Ashley comes on, maybe she can point Vinny over to West Boylston and see what they're doing over there. I think it's a little bit different situation. It's not a dam uh, near the center of their town. It's more near access down to the reservoir. Is that kind of your impression, Julianne? Um, oh, oh, yes, yes. But uh, um, it'd be really interesting to know exactly how they do that. Like, do they do it little by little? You know, the, the engineering of it. I, I'm i really curious to know how that happens. And maybe Ashley can fill us in. Or maybe you all know how it's done. I'm no expert in dams. I say the word a lot. Other than that, I'm no expert in it. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh let's let's push this agenda item off see if ashley joins us later on and we can bring this up again and see if she knows anything about what's going on in west boylston or if she wants to find out some more about that so we'll move on to the next item to an update from julianne and Lori about what's going on with our downtown beautification which i want to say i've been in and out of downtown quite a bit i think a really nice job is being done down there with the planters and the work yeah. on the strips and the work the garden club did in front of the old town hall things are coming up very nicely there. So uh, Julianne, you want to go first? Okay, sure. So, um, you know, I'm sure you've all seen the efforts that we've made. And um, I just wanted to say that strip at the corner of 135 and 20 is is not quite um, what it will be in a, in a few weeks. Gary Phillips has been doing tons of work there. He's been watering every single day. As you know, this is a challenging weather weather situation, mm -hmm. but um, once they take hold, I think they're, it's going to look really nice. And um, so maybe this is the time to mention that when we were working one, I think fr one Friday night and one Saturday morning, and Gary and I both noticed that it's a very noisy when you are in that part of town. 
And and the noise definitely comes from traffic, traffic that's probably going a little too fast. But also there's, there, you know, now that it's summer, windows are down and people are playing their music very loudly. And, and I, you know, I mean, we all have different tastes in music and everyone's music taste is not everyone else's. And I briefly looked up when I got home whether there are such things as noise ordinances. And a, a few towns actually do have something like that. I think it's Lemonster has one uh, um, uh, talking about this. And one of the reasons they cite that they have an ordinance about it is because when you're playing your music very loudly, you may not hear an emergency vehicle. So unfortunately, I ran out of time today. I was going to call the police chief and see if there's anything on our books about that. But it's something something to think about if we want that that whole uh, section to be pleasant and a nice place to walk. Um, so you know, while we were there, there was there was one like near accident and an argument about people going into the right lane to make that right turn onto 135. And we noticed very few people walking and crossing the street. So I think we have to, we have to start, this is just my opinion, um, thinking about how we can make that more, more of a pleasant experience. I'd love to hear from, from people about that. And just one more thing on my report is that uh, we're deciding on the ARPA money and I put in for the tree program. So Hopefully I can convince my fellow select board members to, you know, to vote for $25,000 towards a tree program. Oh, good. Thank you for that. That will be a big help. Lori, updates? Thank you, Julianne, for your support on the uh, tree program. That's exciting. So I look forward to hearing more from you on that, uh, whether they support it or not. Um, in other news for the uh, downtown beautification streetscape project, I'm happy to report that the RP is complete. Um, I have everything that I need to uh, release that on the street, except for one thing, which I was hoping to get today before I went on vacation uh, for the next week. And that is to um, get a definitive response from the property owner, uh, the new property owner of the parking lots that Fatouche restaurant sits on and the doggy den. Um, so there is a new owner. Um, she primarily resides in Hong Kong. So she isn't the easiest person to get in touch with. Um, so I did speak with the uh, property manager. So she has been uh, the go-between. And she seems very interested uh, in participating in the program. Uh, she did send me an email today uh, with some follow-up questions. Uh, she was concerned that if she doesn't like the design, is the town going to force her to participate. And of course I said, absolutely not. Uh, she also was concerned that participation would mean that she couldn't sell the property should she choose to, um, which of course is also not the case. So I uh, responded to her questions and I gave uh, an extended deadline um, since I wasn't able to release the RP today. Uh, I figured uh, why not give her an extra week since I'm going to be on vacation anyway? So I told her that if I didn't have a definitive answer by next Friday, then on July 1st, I was planning on releasing the RFP. So I am concerned, and I did explain that I am concerned that if we hold off much longer, uh, the design won't be to the point that I need it to be. Uh, in order to apply for uh, grants. So the grants that I'm interested in applying for uh, for construction are due in May and June of next week, uh, next year. So they do have to be pretty far along, not 100%, but I need to be pretty solid in the cost estimate 
um, in order to apply for those grants. So uh, that's pretty much uh, the update that I have on uh, the Streetscape project. Does anybody have any questions? Rick, um, through you, I, I have a question. Um, do you now have to juggle, I mean, if, if Julianne is successful in getting support for ARPA money, that's also giving you like a time frame that you have to work within, right? Will it match or um, benefit, you know, like seed money for the grant that you can commit to? Because that also has to be like signed off on and spent in, in a time frame. Yeah, so the two hundred and fifty thousand that uh, the of ARPA money that the select board uh, authorized me to use, uh, the contract would have to be signed with the with the engineering firm by uh, December thirty first. So of course, if uh, we release the bid in a week's time, then I anticipate having a uh, designer, an engineering firm under contract by September 1st. So we'll have plenty of time to meet that deadline. Okay, all right. So I was getting that confused with the little 25,000 for the trees, treescape versus streetscape, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that 25,000 okay. uh, should be pretty easy to spend. So mm -hmm. if... Uh, <laughs> If they do support the project, then I anticipate we'll be able to go forward uh, with some uh, tree planting this fall and then the balance in the spring. So uh, we can certainly get a commitment to fully expend those funds uh, in plenty of time. Okay, the so then Rick, uh, another follow-up. Um, when the ARPA money was discussed at the select board meeting early this week, um, select person Maselli had put in her wish list funding for um, just broadly saying striping of parking lots for municipal parking. So we wouldn't actually need to use ARPA money for that because that on the Blake Street area, because that's going to be part of this grant because Julianne could then try to take that money from her and use it for something else. So I do not anticipate that construction will be ready to go um, by then. So uh, they could certainly use that money uh, for parking lot striping around town, uh, but not as part of the streetscape project, because what I am envisioning is that those parking lots are going to be uh, repaved. So there's no point in doing the striping now if they're going to be repaved. Right. So, Rick, can I ask another? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Jean has. Right, sorry, a... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Jean, you want to get a question, Jean? I do not have a question. No. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Fred. All right. So, um, this uh, additional about um, downtown and beautification in general in revitalization. Um, Lori, can you speak to the the conversation at Design Review about potentially not being interested in parking behind buildings? Um, I know th there was some conversation about in the design re um, design review guidelines changing um, the the recommendation to have parking behind buildings. And there was discussion about not including downtown in that and doing it in other places. But I'm wondering what where that stands and how that may be compatible with what our vision is versus um, in contrast. Yeah, so there was a preliminary discussion that came up at last week's uh, design review committee meeting. Um, I really... Uh, don't think it would be a good idea to revert back to the old pattern of having the parking lots in front of the buildings because that promotes the image of an auto dominant um, streetscape. So what we're trying to do is encourage people to walk. So the last thing you want to do is have them walk by a, a, a parking lot, parked cars. It's just not attractive. It's not 
uh, something that the average person wants to do. So the most attractive part of your typical commercial development is the building itself. Uh, so in a traditional downtown, um, you will see that the buildings most often are up to the sidewalk edge. And that tends to be the type of configuration that is the most pedestrian friendly. So that is what I would recommend uh, that we stay with. That's what our zoning bylaws currently say. That's what our design guidelines currently say. So I'd really like to stick with that. So they didn't make any definitive decisions. It was just a, a discussion topic. So I'm sure we'll be talking about it more in the future. Okay, well, once again, I think that a lot of good work is being done just in the general dressing up of the downtown with the parameters that we can do it. I've also noticed that some of the private business owners have been doing a nice job also in front of their businesses. Maybe that's uh, we're inspiring them a little bit to do that. And hopefully if we do more of this, we'll find some other people sort of jumping on board, you know, in their own spaces also. This is a little bit off the point, but I was not able to uh, watch the select board meeting Monday night. I haven't been able to watch the video of it yet. I'm just interested as to how the discussion went regarding the location of the town offices and the uh, discussion with the committee about the possibility of relocating the offices onto the White Cliffs property. Uh, Loria, Julianne, is there any update you can provide us as to where that stands right now? I defer to Julianne first, uh, and then if she, she uh, I may or may not have something to add. Okay. So uh, we really just got a, um, a summary of their that committee's activities and their recommendation the select board has not made any decision at all um and we haven't even really decided how how to move forward with this i do have to say that a lot of the discussion revolved around the major projects that the town is facing the you know the fire station peasley school and and town hall and um so it was kind of, uh, you know, just accepted that Town Hall is going to be a project that's, you know, probably a good 10 years off. Um, one of the things that Lori answered today is, so one of the things that, of course, we have to discuss is which buildings set, would sell and for how much. Mm -hmm. And um, we still don't really know the value of any of those buildings. I don't know how we go about doing that, but Lori, you commented today and you can take it over from here about how many housing units, for example, for West Main could accommodate and the current town hall, how many housing units they could accommodate because, you know, that's that could be significant in the developer's plans. So, yeah, so um, what I did is I commented based on the existing zoning. Uh, so, of course, we did just approve a new multifamily development overlay district. So that's that whole MBTA zoning that everybody's been talking about. And we did include 63 Main Street, so the current town hall, in that overlay district. So... Uh, the number of uh, units is capped by the number of acres, uh, so it, it has a direct relationship to the size of the parcel. So within the town hall building, it would be capped at 28 units. And then within uh, 4 West Main Street, so that building is not within the overlay it is within the downtown business district, which does allow mixed use. So you can do uh, uh, vertical, this would be vertical mixed use. So a uh, combination of the commercial and the multifamily housing. So because the parcel, so I included um, the open space parcel in front of uh, the building and the building itself. Um, but the number of units would be capped at only seven. So uh, that is uh, pretty tiny. Um, if 
it was to be uh, permitted under a comprehensive permit. So that's uh, otherwise known as chapter 40B. Then zoning uh, pretty much gets thrown in the trash. And so you don't have to adhere to the unit limitation um, under that scenario. But uh, that that pretty much, uh, you know, or getting a variance from the ZBA is the only way you'd be able to increase the number of units. So it seems like, based on a number of large projects in front of the town right now, if the decision is made to, you know, go forward, obviously they're going to have a special town meeting in the fall to talk about getting approval to do the fire station, the new fire station. And then if things need to be done in the schools, you know, if all of the time and expense to do that is going to defer a decision on what to do with the town offices. And if 4 West Main Street is still a viable alternative for the town offices, then that, you know, basically continues to sort of put off in the distance that one catalyst area from the downtown revitalization report that talked about developing for West Main Street down Blake Street back to the fire station as a possible area. Um, so that would all have to sort of be continue to be put on hold. The fire station, the Pierce Street fire station itself would become available certainly within that time frame. And uh Lori and I did a short video presentation as part of the whole lead up to the fire station to talk about reuse possibilities for the Pierce Street fire station, of which there are many you know, kind of thing. So it might be interesting to see kind of what decisions are reached on that building if they're reached sort of independently of kind of a Blake Street downtown revitalization project. So I guess nothing is going to happen here, particularly in the short term. We'll just sort of sort of keep our eye on on what's going on there and, you know, see what else, you know, might be possible uh, as far as downtown revitalization. Red Rick. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Fred. I was, gonna, I was just going to add the the next step would be if the select board agreed to um, select the White Cliffs property for town hall. It's not that it would get ahead of the fire station or Peasley, but at least then it would get to the financial planning committee so that it could then be put in the projected five and 10 year plan. And then we would know, have a better sense of when it would happen. Um, but until they commit to to that, that, that would be the next step. Right, and I would agree that if there was a commitment to at some point use the White Cliffs property to relocate the town hall, that would then open up the possibility to view you know, the scenario in the downtown revitalization plan is total from 4 West Main back to the fire station and see how that would all work out. So that would give us a little bit more of a, a picture, direction of what to do down there. Do you think, Julianne, that independent of when it may happen, that the select board would try and at least reach a decision as to where the town hall should be relocated when it's finally done? Or is that going to be deferred also? No, I th I th I think we all agree that we can't. The town can't keep carrying all these empty buildings. So we know that we have to, you, you know, if it's White Cliffs, and we're going to have to know that it's ten years down the road, or maybe even more. But we'll make sure that the building remains, you know, in good condition. Um, so I, we all understand that, you know, we can't we can't keep <laughs> because the on it. Uh, the yearly expenses, it, it starts to add up. But um, can I ask Lori a question? So how how do you how do you um, go about, say, you know, reaching out? So do you reach out to special real estate people to figure out if what the market would be for Four West Main? Um, so I understand. I've been uh, talking with Tim about uh, an approach. And one thing that you can do is you can issue a request for proposals um, to lease the property and uh, see what the interest is. So people would submit their proposals. I, I know that there is one business in particular 
that is interested in leasing uh, the, the restaurant space. So they would uh, compete against each other, assuming that there's more than just the one. And uh, then the town would uh, look at their application, look at their financial information, um, their any sort of references they might have, and determine whether they want to sign a lease with uh, any of the folks who submit proposals. So another possibility is to hire a commercial realtor and uh, list the property and then um, see if, if the realtor, well, of course, there's a cost associated with that and see if uh, they can find tenants who would be interested in occupying the space. Which approach gets you the most activity? Well, I'd probably go the free route first. I would issue the RFP and see what you get. And then if that's unsuccessful, maybe explore the other option. I know Tim has had experience in his prior town, uh, in the town of Grafton, in at leasing out a commercial property. Um, sorry, municipally owned property. So he's probably the best one to speak to. All right, before we move off this topic, um, anybody else on the board have any comments or questions about just kind of what's going on in downtown in general? It seems like in the short term, we are making good progress in terms of dressing the place up and doing some beautification efforts. When the RFP is released, on the Blake Street project, we'll get a good idea of what might be possible on Blake Street, at least to start to improve, you know, that area. And then just sort of keep an eye out to see what decisions are made relative to the other buildings there. And once again, if the fire station project is approved at special town meeting at that point, then I think there'll probably be some more activity to look at, you know, what is what are the options for eventually reusing the fire station on Pierce Street when that plays into you know, uh, part of the downtown revitalization, depending on what gets decided there. So there's a number of things to watch. Once again, any other comments or questions before we move on to the next agenda item? Jen? I just had a quick thing. Um, uh, Robin Kennedy reached out to um, uh, Terry, our chair for um, Cultural Council, and she uh, invited us to coffee. So we went last week and um, she, we were talking about, you know, all the cool artsy things we're doing in town. And she said that um, her assistant was going to get us the information for um, the railroad company's um, nonprofit or something. Anyways, so that we could do, I showed her the photos from the Tower Hill um, cool metal things that they have. And she was going to get us an info of who to contact about try to get grant money to um, do that sort of artsy project we had talked about at a previous meeting. And she had some other things too, but I don't want to take up all the times. It was a really good meeting, I felt, um, because she had reached out and I'm kind of excited. Oh, good. I do I want to tag in quickly on that, that the beautification, I think the, the flowers have been great, but I also do think that the, uh, the chairs out front have been really nice too. Great. I, I see things happening, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Jen, could you just remind us who Robin Kennedy is? She's our senator. Um, she represents Worcester, Boylston, West Boylston, Bolton, Berlin, and us. I think I got Jen, did she did you talk about a specific project or a CSX would fund any project? She I, I, I specifically know. told her that we had an idea to kind of clean up that area. We were talking about Lake Street and how we did the chair reveal there because we wanted to bring some attention to that area and the and the lack of a pocket park, which could be a cool one. And mm -hmm. so um, that was sort of our intention of having the chair reveal there. And, and the chairs are cute there and people have been using them. And so we said, oh, you know, it's really too bad the railroad leaves all their junk there. And I said, we have this really cool idea. And she said, oh, we've got this group and uh, it's not a nonprofit. I forget what she called it. Anyways, um, who fund they like to fund nice little feel-good projects basically 
And mm. so she was going to get us the information on that. And I was like, well, a grant for five or $8,000 was a feel good from them. But for a cultural council to raise that kind of money, that would take us years. So I was like, sure, yeah. we'll take your information. Wow. Great. Yeah. Good things. Yeah, just trying to, you know, continue to make connections and see what happens. Another thing, uh, Julianne, for your information, um, you know, today Tower Hill had the annual meeting and we gave out our community greening awards, one of which went to Gary Phillips for the work that he did at Watson Park. And I hadn't met him before, but he was there to receive his award today. So I went up to him, introduced myself and, and complimented him on the work that you guys are doing downtown. He said that he's really interested in that and wants to continue to help out with that. So I was glad to get to meet him and be able to express appreciation for the work that's going on there, as well as the things he's done over at Watson Park. So I think he's a good resource to have going down the road for the things we might want to do. He's amazing. Yes. Who, who was that? <laughs> Gary Phillips. Gary Phillips did, is our native plant expert in town. He's he's just taken it on as a major hobby and really educated himself in native mm -hmm. plants. And he redid all of Watson Park. I think he's doing a meadow over there. Um, and he's, you know, he's working with um, FedEx about the invasive lupin in the back of that property and is helping out with that strip there. He's just, he's a very dedicated man. And, um, mm -hmm. He actually did a class uh, at the library in the fall and um, he applied for a grant from the cultural council, which we gave him a small grant and he oh. sent us photos of his porch and cut off um, water, you know, milk jugs, like gallons covered in snow, like but the entire deck was covered with them. And it was, there were seedlings getting ready for this oh. year. So he's really quite um, amazing. I think yeah. to do all that completely voluntarily and, and just because he wants to. So I, I think yeah. it's cool. And I'm, I was happy that we were able to support him in that. Is he a Northboro resident? Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. If you haven't been over to Watson Park at the entrance there, just go yeah. over there and take a look at what he's planted and the way he's used stones painted with the names of the plants on them, everything. It's really, he's, he's done a nice job over there. And it, they attract pollinators and sequester carbon and use native yeah. varieties. There's a lot that we recognize him for in Tower Hill for the good work he's doing over there. Nice. Okay, uh, moving on. I see that Ashley has joined us. Uh, Ashley, we deferred discussion on dam removal. I just wonder, we'll go back to that. Do you have any further updates on kind of what's going on with that at this point? Yeah, I mean, I met with them, you know, on another matter. It's a bit uncomfortable for me just because I think um, I'm in a position where I probably sh shouldn't be the one to be talking to them about town stuff. I think they wouldn't feel comfortable saying no, even if they wanted to. Um, it's a bit it's a bit strange. So if we have another person who might want to take the lead and I can kind of be, you know, at least face to face with them and I can be in the background working on, on stuff, um, but at least having direct communication with them would probably be better. But they were actually very excited about dams in Northboro. I think they really feel like Northboro is the next big focus for them. Um, I think right now, as an organization, they're most focused on outreach and really engaging communities. And they feel like Northboro would be a place that they could really do that in a big way. Um, but I think it's, it's that's a few years down the line. But in terms of the dam removals, I just kind of ask them if there's a general process, how would they um, lead it? And it, it could go a number of ways. Um, town could lead it, they could lead it. But I kind of said, we don't really have the expertise here in town. So it would be great if they could just kind of give us a list of steps and, and things we could do to kind of tee everything up. Um, so I need to follow up with that just to, to get that and move that along. But I did want to put it out there. And I think Jean um, Cahill uh, may have left, I don't know if she's still on the committee, but um if she is, I would talk to her about maybe being that point of contact for them. If she is not, then uh, maybe another person might be willing to just be the person that emails them and I can 
I'd be happy to just do everything in the background um, on that. Is it a point now where Vinny could sort of just sort of take it over and coordinate directly with ours? Yeah, it really could be. I think so. I, that might be the best way to go. And, and then I can talk to Vinny and just tell him I'm happy to, you know, push things along and, and do whatever needs to be done. And then he could be the point person with, with ORS. Cause yeah, I, I just feel did. like, you know, my position with them, it's just, it just puts me in a bit of an awkward position um, working with them in this way uh, from the other side. So it seems like you and Gene have moved this far enough down the road here that if Vinny's interested in doing it, he could sort of just sort of coordinate with them. And then from time to time, our committee could just, you know, bug Vinny once in a while as to what's going on, you know, kind of thing. And then if he wants to use you as a technical resource, he could do that. So maybe could Definitely. you have a discussion with Vinny and see if he's willing to sort of take on that responsibility? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. And I'm working with him on another project in a similar way through the Open Space Committee. So I think that that makes good sense. That works for me. Good. Okay, um, why don't we put this on the agenda again for next month and you can sort of give us another update here as to how that's all going kind of thing. And I think it makes sense to just let the staff sort of get in the middle of this now and and then we can perform our role, which is to bug people about what are they doing kind of thing. So, good. Rick, okay, thanks. Ed. The other thing, Ashley, um, okay, hey, Julian. Uh, so, so about this, you know, uh, working with Vinny, I, I totally agree, but I think we should talk to Jean and see if she still wants to stay involved because I, I, my suspicion is that she would like to stay very involved. So it would be great if she could and, and work with Vinny since she, I, I don't know why she's not here tonight, but she, you know, she's, um, she did do a lot of work to get us to this point and she knows the players. So mm -hmm. I think she, sh it'd be great if she could, if she would stay on, I'll talk to her and see if, if you want. Or Rick, you can reach out to her. You could do that. The only thing I'm thinking is Jean was the one who recommended that she sort of drop off of this and actually take it over. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why she decided to do that, but she seemed to want to get out of the middle of it for some reason. No, I think she she felt like, um, I, I don't know if she felt like she wasn't making headway headway on, on the town end. Um, so so maybe if, if we encourage her, she'll be happy to do it. Sorry, we have a lot of family here, so I might not be able to stay for the whole meeting. I don't know if you can hear all the background noise, but there's a lot of it. So. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, I guess one, um, why don't you at least contact Vinny, uh, Ashley, and just see if he wants to get involved in this. And then, you know, Julian, if you want to follow up with, with Jean and just see what role she wants to continue to play, you know, let her know that Ashley's going to sort of go into the background. Hopefully Vinny will take over. And Jean wants to play a part in this. That'd be fine. The other thing, Ashley, um, there was an article about a big dam removal project going on in West Boylston now, a very old historic dam that used to prevent silt from getting into the Wachusett Reservoir that isn't needed anymore. So I'm not sure if you're aware of that or if you're not. When you talk to Vinny, you might want to have them sort of plug into what's going on in West Boylston. There might be some good information over there. Sure, I can talk to him about that. And I know, you know, Berlin has been working with ORS on that dam uh, just over the Northboro border. So that might be helpful too, to talk to Berlin and see how that's going there. So yeah, I'll talk to Vinny and, and, um, and, and just kind of get him up to speed and see how he wants to proceed. Okay, good. All right, let's move on. Next item in the agenda is this review letter that we've drafted based on our meeting last time to try and indicate to the select board and the land use boards that there are decisions the town has to make to sort of move forward economic development and um, downtown revitalization. And sort of a byproduct of that was to sort of give a status update on where we stand with the master plan in general. So people got copies of that. We had some comments uh, from, uh, from John Campbell and from uh, Gene Kennedy, which Lori factored in and sent out an updated version. And then just recently, uh, mid to late afternoon, uh, uh, Amy, who can't be here tonight, sent in some other comments, which I think um, Lori sent out to us. So I'm not sure who's seen what at this point, whether people have at least seen 
the letter that carried John and Jean's comments, maybe not um, at this point, uh, Amy's comments. Once again, the point of the letter is to do two things, is to update the select board and the land use boards on the current status of the master plan in general, and then to indicate that there are items around economic development and downtown revitalization that really can't be moved on until the town makes some decisions about how far and how fast they want to move on things. So that's kind of the, the point. But I'll open up the floor now to uh, comments or questions. Who'd like to make a comment or any, about the thing? Is any other changes people would like to see? Um, and also, I, we need to make some decisions around the changes that Amy suggested that weren't in the last draft that uh, that uh, Lori sent out. So, floor is open. So, Anybody so we comments? did or didn't get the changes that Amy made because I didn't see anything on that. I, I forwarded you changes. Um... It was later in the afternoon, maybe around the three o'clock hour, somewhere around there. The last thing I have from you is from 220, the Metro West employee survey. It might have been. Uh, I can check my email. Okay. I, I'm just wondering. Maybe it I'll went see if the... I can open it and maybe share it with everybody. Um... Yeah, so there should be the two documents now. There is the the document that we thought was kind of the one that carried all the changes. And then there's uh, a separate document that doesn't have Amy's changes in it. It's her changes to that document. So there are two things. We're kind of working on. I can on share my Amy's screen. Writing. This, this is the version that Amy. Commented okay, I think on. it went to my other email. Sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. Um, uh, maybe you can uh, let me know offline. Yes. Which yeah. one you want me to use? Yep, that makes sense. Okay, yep. All I right. It. I see it, yep. So her changes are tracked in the text. Um, so th the original black uh, yep. was my attempt at incorporating the comments that I received from both Jean and John Campbell. And then the red are her changes. I did notice that Jean had his hand up, so he probably has... Something he wants to say? Well, uh, I read Amy's uh, comments, and uh, I understand what she means about not having too many community meetings or community meeting overload. Uh, I just wanted to emphasize that my original thought was more along the lines of a, maybe a roundtable discussion between specifically the planning board and the selectmen on economic development issues as a way to clarify their thinking and as a way to either move some of those items along or depending on what their thoughts are, uh, maybe have us go in another direction while some of those economic development items uh, sort of simmer for a while. Uh, I agree with Amy that uh, probably the Zoning Board of Appeals shouldn't be necessarily part of it. They really are just a permit granting uh, group. Mm -hmm. uh, but it seems that some discussion by the two key policy making organizations in town, the planning board and the selectmen on economic development, maybe this issue that has come up uh in terms of housing density downtown, I know Amy has one perspective on that and there may be other views, but having a public conversation about those items um, can give each of those boards some direction, but also us as a committee, some direction on what we should be doing in terms of uh, following up on master plan recommendations. Mm -hmm. I'd just be interested in people's thought about Amy's suggestion that the Zoning Board of Appeals is not a party to this letter. Does anyone does anyone feel strongly that they should be or not? I, I guess they, sorry. Okay, Fran, why don't you go ahead? All right, so, I mean, I, I don't think 
I mean, it's not, nothing that I think we should delay this letter on. If Amy feels that strongly, I will say that the zoning board historically does um, permit um, have permit process with the business area more than the planning board. And yes, they don't draft the uh, zoning bylaws, but they do participate in discussion mm -hmm. with the planning board over them. And they are listed as implementation partners on several of the goals for the um, specifically the downtown revitalization. But I just want to see this move forward. So um, Amy's not here, unfortunately, to to explain more about why she felt that way. So whatever's going to get this, you know, ink dried and signed and move to the next level, because the select board and planning alone will have to try to coordinate a meeting time to to move forward. Because we do, I think we've all heard from Lori often enough that she, we need specific, very direct guidance as to what is it that the town wants the downtown to be. Okay. Kind of, Julian, do you have a comment? Well, I, I like the letter and and I do I think I I I mean I don't know what Amy's thinking was, but it does kind of make sense that the zoning board of appeals since since they you know since they grant permits and everything, they're they're the like the the legal people. So they're not really the planning people. Um but I, I, yeah, I think that this has to go up because we have to figure out what, you know, what these two boards and the town in general want us, you know, to start really moving on. And, and I think they do want us to start moving on downtown, but we need to get some support from them, right? Mm -hmm. Especially if it's with an economic development committee or a person and money. So. Yep. I'm getting a sense that if this letter went to the select board and the planning board at their discretion, if they wanted to involve the ZBA in part of this discussion process, they could do that. Um, but to not send it directly to the zoning board, I'm not hearing a lot of um, disagreement about that. And the, Rick, uh, I mean, I mean, think about it. I mean, we have two planning board members on this committee. We have one select board member on this committee. We have a select person and a planning board member on design review. So if those 10 people in their variety of roles can't like come up with what we should be doing so we can move forward, adding more people to it is not going to make it better. It's not going to make it easier. We just need the, I think, 10, those 10 people in their overlapping roles and point of you, um, you know, move us to the next. Well, I, I, again, I also to your point, Fran, is that, you know, the design standards for the look and feel really haven't been um, specified. So we, we, we need to clarify that too. Um, Millie, just to, an update, I have been working with the design review committee on uh, updates to the design guidelines. Okay. Um, so those will be forthcoming. They're just Great. not ready for prime time yet. So okay. that's why you haven't seen anything. Um, okay. I, do, I do have yeah. one comment on uh, the changes that Amy had recommended. This this sentence right here, the master plan goals, ED21, ED24. I would really like to keep that sentence in um, and the reason why is because I think it's important to pinpoint those economic development related goals that we haven't made any progress on. And part of the reason for that is because um, it isn't clear if there's any support. So like one of those recommendations was to extend sewer to Route 9. So that didn't uh, fare well when I went to the select board me uh, meeting for a letter of support. So I, I think it's important to discuss specific goals at that meeting to see if the leadership supports those goals. 
Um, because I, as a staff person, don't want to waste my time on uh, doing projects that aren't going to be supported by the leadership. So then it just ends up being a time suck with no uh, end, positive end result. So I'd rather concentrate my limited time on projects that are supported by the leadership. So I, I think it's important to identify those specific goals so that uh, we can be clear to touch on them during this roundtable discussion or whatever you want to call it. And would it be helpful to say maybe following that, basically to Amy's point, others are just as important, but these are the ones that have fallen behind? I, you know, maybe somehow, you know, couch that in. I think my feeling is that the point of this letter is to stress the need to make some decisions in the yeah. area of economic development. Yeah, I agree with that, Rick. Thank you. And so I agree with Amy's comment. There are other important goals in the master plan, but that's not the point of this letter is to point out everything that's important. The master plan hasn't been done yet, yep. only to focus yep. on, you know, what needs to be decided around economic development. So my feeling was, I understand what Lori is saying. My feeling was the reason to leave these in and not include others is only to focus this letter on economic development. And, and he's going to highlight those key economic development goals. So I would vote to leave this sentence in for that reason. Mm -hmm. Sure. I think any, um, dis any disagreement with this taking the leaving yeah. this sentence in and taking leaving it in. I mean, I I I'm okay either way. I guess I just felt like for the letter, I I would love to you know Jean's comment at the end of the last meeting was was really on point. And I felt like it was buried in the last paragraph of the letter. So I would just love it if we could bring to the top this request, need, however you want to term it, um, for these groups to come together and discuss the surveys that we haven't maybe paid enough attention to and all these economic development items from the master plan and make those decisions and decide, do we hire somebody? Do we you know, have a committee? What do, how are we really going about this and how do we feel that the town wants to look at this and proceed? Because that, that was really Jean's comment at the end of the last um, meeting. And, um, and I, I just think that's the, that's the real need for this letter. And I think that was buried after the sort of update pieces. I just want to bring it to the top. So which sense is, I'm trying to figure out exactly which would be the best thing to bring up. Would it be, and what's in the screen right now in the uh, the last sentence in the top paragraph says the downtown revision plan offers strategies for downtown development. The MPSC needs clarity and consensus among the boards around economic development to effectively steer, blah, blah, blah. I mean, is that a sentence, like that sentence should sort of come up to the top? As yeah, sort of the I feel like the, 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 last, the last two paragraphs, you know, yeah. Um, should the select board and we're writing this letter because we think that you know these boards should consider a joint meeting to develop a clearer vision and then you know here's where we're at these are some things to consider please let us know if we can schedule this meeting you know and and I so are you saying the select board the planning board and the mpic would do a joint meeting or just the select board and planning board I think all three need to come together to discuss because the MPIC and I mean, obviously people who were involved in the the, mas the master plan itself, not everyone's on the MPIC, but everyone who kind of has, has been here through the process of polling the citizens, hearing their responses, figuring out what needs to be done, what people want to be done, what we should do around economic development, I think should come together and, and figure out how to proceed. So would you want to say that the um, select board and planning board should consider a joint meeting with the MPIC to discuss? Because the way that's written to me doesn't seem to integrate the MPIC at all into there. I don't know. I think the point of the letter right, was Billy. to sort of move the responsibility for moving, taking the next step forward to basically the planning board and the 
select board to make some decisions as to where they want to take the town in this area? I don't think that they can do that without us there to explain to them what's happened to this point, the process, yep. our the background, and then you know if they want to have few meetings from there. Yes, great, but um, I think we should be there for the first one to and, develop this clear vision. Right, and and that that's what my concern would be is that if you just say oh we should meet, there would be no cohesive agenda for them to discuss. I agree with that, Ashley. I think I think that's a that's a good idea. And it doesn't even have to be, you know, if we can't get a quorum, it's not like we're voting on anything. So just as many of us that as can come as yep. possible. I have a quick thing. I found the letter to be very broad. And if you want to strategically plan something for actionable items to, to happen, it, it can't have, oh, we're going to talk about the look and feel, and we're going to talk about the town offices, and we're going to talk about this. Like in a two-hour meeting, you can't have two, three, four boards, however many people you want, in a room or in a Zoom and talk about all eight of these action points that are listed on here. You, it really has to narrow down the focus, I think, and say, we're going to talk about economic development in this one area you know, commercial, industrial. Okay, let's talk about that. And then X amount of time later, okay, let's talk about downtown. Okay, X, because you can't say, oh, let's talk about all of it all at the same time, all of us. It's it's just not gonna. I think, uh, I mean, I think work. when w the last meeting and, and Jean's point, bringing it together, we were really talking about downtown. Mm -hmm. From my understanding and my memory, it was about downtown and how do we change the zoning downtown and how do we bring in yeah. sewer downtown? You know, all these different things. I think it's really about the downtown and I think that's what it should focus yeah. on. And I think everything else will flow from that, but that's just my perspective. But as Lori said in her letter, our downtown isn't really big enough to justify creating an economic development position. So it is beyond that. Right? But but so our downtown plan, when we talked to the consultants, that's that was their recommendation to hire somebody mm -hmm. to work mm -hmm. on economic development downtown. So if that's not mm -hmm. a, I mean, I think that would be a major part of the position and I, I would obviously include the entire town, but I think it would be a major part. So mm -hmm. if we can come up with a clear vision for how we want to proceed with economic development in the downtown and whether we need uh, to hire somebody or not, then I think everything else can flow from there. But I, I think that's the, you know, that's the elephant in the room. And I think that's what needs to be figured out. I, I agree that's the elephant in the room, but the master plan itself covered economic development in a much broader scope. And some of the goals that we highlight here in the letter are broader across economic development across the entire town kind of thing and so i think part of the, the the focus of what we want clarity on as an npic is certainly this plays into the downtown but just in general you know where is the town going in terms of economic development you know town wide because these goals that we highlight in this sentence here mm -hmm. are beyond the downtown so I don't think it was the point of the letter to, to get clarity on how to do downtown revitalization as much as it was there's a number of goals around economic development in general mm -hmm. that haven't been addressed at this point and need to be. And there's no doubt that as they are and a position is taken, it helps to crystallize how to work on the downtown itself. So I'm not sure we want to focus this letter as much on the downtown as no, you're, focusing you're on the master plan. You're absolutely right, Jean. And I mean, Rick, um, I I think if we needed to focus on something, as Jen was suggesting, that would be where I would focus to try mm -hmm. to have a big chunk of the meeting just to be focused around that. But I, I, I don't know if I agree necessarily. I think that if we're coming up with a if we want to understand 
the survey responses and the feedback we've gotten and the master plan and the downtown plan and pull it all together and, and, and develop this clear vision. I think that's one agenda item. We're not diving deep on town offices. We're not diving deep on the zoning bylaws. We're just coming up with this broader vision, which Lori feels as the town planner that we don't have a clear vision. And so can we just do that? Can we sit and do that in one meeting and try to have consensus around how are we moving forward and what are the top priorities or, you know, how, how do we, what's the general consensus on, on what we want in this town? I, I don't yeah. think that's too much to tackle. I really don't, but yeah. we've, we've gotten pretty far on it from all of the work that we've done. We have all the background information, I guess. I, I would just say, Gene, why don't you go ahead, Gene? Let's hear from you. Excuse me. I was just going to say, I mean, it it does go more than just goes to more extensive than to just downtown. I mean, I noticed that we have something called the Industrial <laughs> Development Commission, a committee, and I read somewhere that they sort of uh, not meeting much or they're not meeting at all. Uh, so it just raised the question to me on how best to organize for economic development in the town. That includes the, the town-wide issues that we've seen crop up over the last couple of years, new warehousing, uh, additional traffic, more trucks, uh, but it also includes downtown and how best to organize to get things done downtown. So the thought was to have a general discussion about economic development and yeah. perhaps discuss possible organizational improvements that would help the town, you know, whether it's a new economic development committee or commission or reinstituting the industrial development committee in some way to get them more active. Uh, but just have a general discussion by the policymaking boards on what they would like to see and how best to maybe uh, have that take place. And I think my 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 understanding is this this isn't going to be one meeting. This is going to be a series of discussions. There'll be an initial meeting mm -hmm. to sort of lay out these issues and get feedback from yeah. people. But I'm sure that's going to generate questions and need for research. And so I see this as a process that we want the boards to go through that will eventually end up with some sort of an agreed upon position the town wants yeah. to take, which will then lead towards what does it take from a staffing perspective or a committee perspective to make it happen? And, you know, how does this play into the larger picture of attracting economic development and revitalizing the downtown? So I think we can't think of this as a point in time that this is all going to happen the select board and the planning board are going to get together in two hours later. It's going to be Eureka. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen that way at all. I think there's going to be an initial meeting that maybe, as you suggest, Ashley, we should be represented at to help frame the problems. I agree. And then it's going to be a process for these uh, the planning board and the select board to work their way through their agreements and disagreements. And to the extent we can help facilitate that or you know, Lori can help facilitate that. You know, we can do that. But I see this is going to take a while to figure out. Yeah. Which gets me back to that list of items, those bullet points. I would not delete them. I think they're, although they're broad, it's not my expectation. Anybody's going to figure all that out in one meeting. But we'll get them on the table. I, I guess... I would hate to go into this thinking that it's going to be a series of meetings because we've been working. Let's see. I was pregnant with my seven-year-old when we started the master plan and <laughs> uh, we've gotten a lot of data. Mm. We've gotten all the information we need and now we have to just Action. push things along. I, I yeah. I don't see what needs to be talked about. We've talked it all out. We've gotten all the responses and now we just need to pull it all together. I, th I think way. it's just a sense of direction though, because 
when you say something like, you know, determining whether the town should expand commercial and that's, that's a whole who under who does that fall under, you know, and so, you know, there's, there's seven bullet points here that I think deciding who takes on what, which board takes on what is, is going to be a challenge. Um, and, you know, yes, we have a lot of data, but at the same time, you know, the master plan implement, implementation committee is the one that has the data on the master plan. I would I guess, say the planning board doesn't, the, maybe even the select board doesn't, other than their specific, you know, representatives. Yeah, I mean, I guess my my point is, you know, Lori has this feeling and, and sure. warranted that there are items in the master plan that she wants to execute on and she doesn't feel that there's consensus around it. So if we get some consensus from all various boards and committees, okay. then, you know, as each of these things arises, we, as the master plan, we're saying, you know, X, Y, Z, you're doing these different things. And maybe we provide some of that background that we have the luxury of having. But if there's this consensus gained from a joint meeting or meetings, but hopefully not too many, then it'll be a bit easier to move these things along. Okay. Okay, that's that's sort of what how I think. I agree. There needs to be consensus. I just don't think it's going to come easily. I think what it, we need it to do is launch, launch the discussions. That yeah, there will Let be a lot of people say what's on their minds. Yeah, see what happens. Lori, go ahead. Lori, I yeah, I just wanted to um, confirm well, Ashley's comments that. Yes, my my concern is that I fear that the leadership does not support certain recommendations that are in the master plan. So mm -hmm. I am looking for clarification if that is in fact the case. And if that is in fact the case, what do we do from there? Where do we go? Do we just ignore these goals and say, sorry, you know, we're either going to put these on a back burner until the leadership changes, or are we going to say um, this is no longer the priority, so we want to go in a different direction, and what direction do we then want to go in? So that is the guidance that I'm looking for. I'm looking for, I have question marks uh, after certain goals and objectives, I want to know, am I right that you are not supportive? Or is it that you're not supportive under certain um, scenarios? Like maybe you support portions of the goal and objective, but not the way that I'm proposing to implement it. Um, that is what would be helpful for me. Can, can I ask specifically if there are specifics of what you felt not supported on or whether it was a presentation of something that may or may not have gotten the support you looked for, but it was supported, but only to a certain extent? I guess I'm a little unclear about what specifically is not. Um, two things, uh, two, two major economic development initiatives that I've tried over the course of the last year. The first one is the sign and facade program, yeah. which was originally funded and then the money was revoked about a month later. And then the second one is the sewer extension project to Route 9. So okay. both of those are uh, specifically stated in the master plan. So, um, and both of those were not supported. So was it the approach that wasn't supported? Or is it that those are no longer priorities or they're no longer, or they're not priorities of the specific folks who are in leadership? Or that specific program wasn't supported for whatever that right. was, or the Correct. specific proposal. But So but like for general, example, the sign, sign and facade program. Yeah. Is it that they, they don't support having a sign and facade program ever or that it just hmm. wasn't something that they wanted to pay for with ARPA money. See, that's that's the question. You know, at some point what wasn't supported 
may not necessarily mean the board didn't support it. It just meant that presentation itself. So I'm just, Correct. I'm just, I was more curious about where that, that sentiment was coming from rather than, um, you know, looking for a point of, of, you know, disparity. Right. And yeah. at the sewer right. extension well, program uh, specifically, you know, I had couched that so that it, uh, assuming that we get the grant, it wouldn't have cost the town of Northborough a dime. So I thought that that would be uh, very much supported by the leadership, but it was not. Uh, so it was a vote of four uh, against and one in support. So that was overwhelming negative hmm. reaction to uh, bringing sewer to Route 9. So that, that really... Yeah caught me off guard okay There's the other thing that i mean that's related to the select board and their decisions and you know to millie's point you know was it those specific projects or the concept in general and that this meeting of the minds could clear that up thank you we also have to look at the planning board and the whole 10 i mean how many meetings over the mbta housing and how can we create these overlay districts so as to not get too much dense housing into a downtown area which is part of the master plan revitalization of downtown was to talk about increased housing so there was conflict there too and is that just specific sure. to that mandate by the state or is it conceptually just not something we want. And I think that this letter is going to bring those two boards together. And I have to say, I, I mean, unless Rick, you know, maybe you should attend, but three of those 10 people are on this committee. They should be able to represent the master plan implementation point of view as members of the planning and select board with maybe some direction from Rick and Ashley or, you know, you know, just a but I don't mm -hmm. think all of us, you know, a little bit, not instead of 11, an additional nine people there is mm. just not going to make it go fast, go, go better. <laughs> yeah. I just want to make, I just want to make the point that although Lori is kind of on the front line of this, it's our job is our, we were, we were put, we were authorized as a committee to oversee or or report back to the town as to how things were going with the master plan, as to where things were being done and where things weren't done and our ideas about how to continue to move the master plan forward. So getting this clarity and decisions made, mm -hmm. although it's, it's important for Lori to be able to effectively do her job and probably others on the staff also. I mean, it's it's really, it's it's for us to understand how much of the goals in this master plan we need to continue to advocate and push for mm. and where some of these goals just don't seem to be on the priority list Priorities. of yeah. the select board of the planning board right now. And so we'll back off or see if in fact there's some changes that need to be made. So I think the purpose of really having these meetings and getting this clarity is for us okay. to be able to get some clarity as to which of these goals we think have the potential to actually be accomplished or some modified version of them so we can continue to do our job, which is to advocate for the goals in the plan, to report on the status of them, and to try and understand if there are goals that haven't been done yet, why not? Or if they're being done differently, why is that the case? So I think that's the role we play. And although on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, Lori and others on the staff, you know, deal with this, our responsibility is to try and understand if there are 106 of these goals, eventually, you know, how many of them got done? And the ones that didn't get done, you know, why not? You know, kind of thing. And once that's done, kind of our reason for existence kind of goes away. Mm -hmm. kind of thing. But as long as there are goals in this plan that are still pending, you know, we need to continue to advocate for understand why that's the case. Can I, can I say something? Sure. So... Let's do a little role playing here. The The master plan was written before COVID. Is that correct? It was yeah, concluded in 2020, so right in the middle of COVID. Okay. 
And would you agree that that commerce has changed dramatically since since COVID? Mm. We see storefronts closing all the time. If if let's just you know pretend that we're having this meeting and someone says, well, what what how do you what kind of commerce do you see being successful in Northboro? What would the answer be? Well, I guess the question is more, what kind of commerce would we like to see in Northboro to begin with? And then how do you go about um, incenting that to happen? I think the question right now is, is disagreement about exactly what people would like to see and how to get there. Yeah, well, I think I'd like to see more... stuff that's just not going to ever come back. <laughs> well, but I think that's not for us to figure out. I, mean, I think it's more about how, what do we, how do, how do the residents, including the members of these boards, want to see this town, and how does that tie into these goals of the master plan? How, we don't have to get into the weeds on everything, and yeah. And and do we need an economic development coordinator to help us figure this out and which businesses will be successful and which won't? And, you know, do we need sewer for things? <laughs> but I think coming up with that clear vision and then we can tie back to that when a sewer extension program comes up and we can say, well, listen, we all agree that we want X for our town. This sewer helps us to to move that along you know i just i think it has to be high level but mm -hmm. I, I know what you're i know what you're saying julianne it's hard it's hard but we can't tackle we can't get that far in well, well with all let's those get back to the letter my, yeah but let's just the, the the purpose of the letter was to incent at this point the planning board and the select board to spend some time and consider these particular goals and economic development in general and reach some consensus about what the town needs to do. So I think the letter, for the most part, does that. I think we've agreed that we'd send the letter to the select board and the planning board. We've agreed that we would leave the reference to those five economic development goals in the letter. Um, and you know, Ashley, you were commented to try and make the letter a little bit stronger to bring out earlier on in the letter um, the fact that we're recommending that there needs to be some consensus um, between the select board and the and the um, and the planning board around kind of where we're going with this, as opposed to leaving that at the end to bring some of that closer to the beginning. So I'm not sensing a lot of changes to the letter at this point, with the exception of dropping the Zoning Board of Appeals as a recipient and trying to emphasize at the beginning of the letter a little bit more um, the purpose for why we're sending the letter in the first place. Are there any other comments about the letter besides dropping the Zoning Board of Appeals and trying to put something in the first paragraph that brings out more strongly the purpose of the letter? Are there any other changes anyone else would like to make to the letter? Can you go over to page two? Is, yep. it, is that you, Lori, or Rick? Uh, yeah, I'll have to share my screen again. So do we want to add on the select board, planning board, and MPIC should consider the joint meeting? Is that the only thing that I would, that might be clarified? Um, well, I think the Fran's point, I think that it's not going to be useful to have the MPIC as part of this joint meeting. Um, I, I think I we need to be there. I just, we don't yeah. need to all be there, but. Like, I, I agree. I don't think we need to all be, that everybody needs to be there, but I think there should be a, if you will, the spokesperson representative, because otherwise you're just, we're just going to have equal members of, of different parts of the boards chiming in with, 
not necessarily the right role or direction. Why don't we do this? Once the letter goes to the select board, I'll contact Mitch, basically say as chair of the MPIC, that at the point that um, the extent they, the select board agrees with us, planning board agrees with us, to the extent they're going to set up an initial meeting to sort of talk through this, that I'd like to be invited to sort of provide some perspective from the MPIC as to why we sent this letter in the first place. So why, you why don't you just to... include a, a representative from the MPIC in the sentence, then you don't just, like Millie yeah. said, it's solved at, at the and outset. And you would send that to Mitch and Carrie, the chair of both boards, just to... Um, well, the last... The last paragraph says... You know, the MPIC will continue to assist in efforts to move forward with economic development and downtown revitalization. Um, which we could add some wording in that the MPIC will continue to assist in efforts to move forward with economic development and downtown revitalization and um, will provide a representative uh, uh, to any um, meetings or discussions at the select board and and planning board have about this topic or something like that i no, think, I, I think right, we need again. to say that we're going to be there i think we need to be there yeah well, i'm saying that <laughs> i don't think it's up to the i think we need to be there to guide them and i don't think we can just say hey we think you guys should have this meeting have fun like i think we need to say a representative from the mpic will be there i think we should lead the discussion i agree I don't think we can just leave it because, up to them. That's yeah, not even fair. though you know, to me, even though we're we're representatives of the MPIC, I you know, I'm coming in from the historic district committee. Everybody's coming in from a different faction at some point. So what I bring might be very limited and may not necessarily fit in even with this part of the letter. So I, I definitely think that we need to have that uh agent of representation otherwise i don't feel like we're going to we're going to spend a lot of time discussing things that are necessarily in our heads but not necessarily um efficient time wise So, so what I'm hearing is that MPIC will lead the discussion and, and, you know, back to your point, Rick, maybe the next move really would be to sit down with Mitch and Carrie and, um, and figure out an agenda and, you know, cause there's a lot and we have to break it down a little bit. Right. But you're kind of asking Mitch and Carrie who aren't members of this committee to then take on the role of representing this committee to Yeah, I think we board. need to come up with the agenda. I think we need to lead and, it. We are asking yeah. for them to come and listen and contribute to the discussion, but we are asking for this meeting. We feel <clears> that it's necessary and we have the full perspective this of this is on the MPIC. And we're asking these to your point, Ashley, we are asking these other committees to really begin to take on these elements of this this progress but i you know i think if we're not if if there's nobody from the mpic leading the way it's not going anywhere ashley if you're willing i think you should represent the mpic <laughs> i'm happy to do that i'm happy to do that but <laughs> You got it. You you you've nailed it. You have the passion. So wasn't well, what I was thinking for, but <laughs> you gotta speak up on this. Well, I think if we're gonna do that, I have a responsibility to to represent the committee. I understand where Ashley is coming from. It just that the tone of this letter changes. The tone of the letter was our job as a committee is to report the status of the plan. Your job as town leadership is to make it happen. Here are some things that aren't happening. Do something about it. 
Rick, I don't think our what I'm hearing is instead the is of the our job as a committee is to make sure the master plan gets implemented. And so we're going to lead you guys down the path. Yeah. That's a completely different, that's a completely different tone that this letter tried to state. No, I, I don't what? see it that way, Rick. Yeah, it I, is. It's I like think... a power play. It's I, I feel like it's kind of a power play. And I don't I don't support yeah. it. Well, I mean, this doesn't seem like it's going to work together. It's like, here's our plan. This is what we came up with. And you guys need to listen and you're not doing it. So here we are. We're going to stronghold you. I don't, I'm just putting it out there. I don't like, I don't like the tone of the letter. I don't like the things that are included in it. I think it's too much muscle, personally. It doesn't say teamwork. Well, I, I, I disagree that we, we need to, we need to send a status out on where things stand on the plan. And I think we need to indicate areas that need some attention. The question is who's gonna lead that and drive that. And and I don't necessarily think that it, it felt that way. I can see how it could be taken that way, but I don't necessarily think that, uh, you know, I myself as a member of the planning board would look at this and say, oh, well, that was really harsh. I would look at it and say, okay, Tell us what we need to do in the sense of where's your feedback coming from and what's the priority and we'll we'll do what we need to do, how to get there. You know, whether it's stoning or whether it's bylaws or whatever, you know, I I honestly think this sounds like a a a, a good initiative to say, okay, we gotta get working on this. Yeah, and Jen, I just like to, that. Just to clarify, Jen, the addition of us saying we will help lead this meeting and, and we want to get your feedback. Is that, is that improving the tone of the letter or is that going in the opposite direction? I wasn't clear on, on your feelings about it. Just want to make sure I understand. Oh, you're muted. Sorry. You're muted. Yes, sorry. Uh, <laughs> That's right. I just think that, the you guys developed the plan in 20, 2020, whatever you said, um, initially, and then you know, pulled out into the downtown part. And you know, the people in those boards, they they listen to each thing as an individual thing that comes up. And for us to say, it's one thing to say, hey, by the way, you know, here's a few things that you haven't looked at. It's another thing to say, look at all this stuff, pay attention. I don't know. I I just I think it's um I, I just think it's a power play. And I think this I, is kind of like a power conflict, you know, like uh, because people are not doing this because, or they're not following the plan or they don't respect the information that was provided. I, I don't know. I mean, if you think about see the that next to last but... paragraph, it says the select board may want to consider joint discussions now it'll be with the planning board or conducting community forums with residents. We're not even saying they should. Well, but Amy, well, I think, that's obvious, though. I think that we need obvious? to request. I, I'm sorry. I don't think it's a power play at all. I think it, it's a helpful exercise. It's not forcing them in any way to vote any particular way, but we're requesting a meeting or you know, a meeting to come together and and have an exercise to express our opinions and and listen to what we've gathered. And this is all of the work that was done. And here is where we stand. How do you feel about these goals? And and us want in in our job is to push them forward. But if yeah. you as a select board and planning board don't agree that these are the right goals, then we need to know that because either we cross them off. We're not doing another master plan right now. And by the way, we started that master plan in 2016, not and it didn't finish in 2020. It's old already. And we're here and we haven't. So I, I mean, I think it's not, it's not anything. I'm not, we don't have anything against the planning board or select board mm -hmm. or their decisions, but they weren't part of that planning process. Very few of us were part of that planning process. And can we all come together and look at this bigger vision? Is this still our vision? Do we all agree that this is the vision? Because if not, you know, maybe the master planning implementation committee needs to think differently about how we're going about this. 
I, and I, I think that, um, you know, I feel that this is sort of a check-in and that's part of, you know, there's a six month or there's a one year goals. Where are we? And I, I definitely feel that as a board member, if I weren't on this committee, I wouldn't really be paying a lot of attention to what's going on. And this to me, if somebody, if, if somebody from the master plan came to the board and said, Hey, let's have a meeting so that we can check in, see where things are at, where are we falling behind? What should we, what should be paid attention to? I think that would be to me a, a helpful piece of, we want to get this moving forward and this is to become more prioritized. I agree, Millie. So John, I'm not exactly clear on your position. So you're saying the letters should be more forceful in not saying the select board may want to consider discussion, but the select board should hold joint discussions <laughs> coordinated through the MPIC? I would use the words the MPIC Recommend. requests that you consider, Re recommends that you consider yeah. a joint meeting. Uh, I think we're at the point where we had, uh, at the last meeting too, it came through that there are roadblocks that, that uh, we have seen among our select board and our land use boards. There does not seem to be consensus it's no disrespect to any particular member, but if we yeah. want to move the master plan forward, we, we need to make it clear that um, to achieve these goals, there needs to be consensus that that's where uh, the land use boards would come down on certain decisions and that the select board was would agree to it as well. So bringing those points forward in a discussion is what this is all about, not yeah. any power play. It's but There's no point in our committee if we're not advocating for those things exactly so i think that the word recommend would be uh maybe more appropriate requests I, well, I mean that's really what we're doing we're requesting this meeting but however you feel like it would come across better i don't think there's anything <laughs> yeah aggressive about that I haven't heard from you recently, Jean. What's your opinion about this? <laughs> I think he dropped off. I don't see him <laughs> here anymore. See attendance or no? Yeah. Jean's not on the call anymore. Mm. You know, I, I, I'd love for Jean to be here because, this, I mean, it was his great, great idea that sort of led to this. And I, I want to make sure we're you know, I, th I thought he had a great point, and I want to be sure that we're honoring the spirit of that. Julian, from your perspective, if this committee takes a little bit more of an aggressive standpoint in this letter and recommends there is a joint meeting and that uh, the MP MPIC is willing to participate and help to lead the initial meeting kind of thing. So we're to that extent. Um, is that seem to make sense to you? Well, my feeling is always that it's, uh, you know, it's, it, it, it's more successful to use gentler language <laughs> and um, that, that we, you know, if whatever you want to say that we, we request or, we think it would be very helpful to to have a joint meeting. It's it where it, no not neither board is going to deny this meeting. I mean, right. I think they're both very curious about what we're doing and mm. and want to participate. And I think that some of the some of the confusion about things that they haven't well, I can say for my board that we haven't approved or then disapproved is because we we haven't been in on um on the early stages of some of these things so you know bringing us all in in a room together and you, you know deciding what direction we're going to take will be very valuable and and i i still well you know we've been discussing how to word it and i think gentler and courteous is always better so that's just my opinion 
Yeah, and I, I just disagree with terming this as an aggressive letter. I don't think it's aggressive at all. I mean, we want to all come together and make sure we're all agreeing and moving forward in the same direction for all of our sakes. I don't see it as aggressive at all. Well, in the spirit of trying to keep this thing moving, I sort of came up with the original draft of this letter, then Lori made some changes, and then we sent it out to you guys for discussion uh, tonight. Lori going to be on vacation. Is Michelle, Lori, is Michelle going to still be in the office? Yes, she's going to be in the office next week. I'm trying to figure out a way that we can continue to move this along without violating open meeting laws. I mean, if I took another stab at sort I mean, of... We, uh, we can't agree on this tonight? Well, I don't know. I'm just trying to think about this. It's more than just a couple of typographical things we're trying to change. Um, we should be able to agree on this tonight. Yeah. This we can hard. also agree that um, that we trust you to <laughs> to incorporate our suggestions and go ahead, can't we? <laughs> I I mean, yeah, I mean, if we yeah. can just sort of reword some of those pieces. Let's just edit the sentence I mean, and get it done. Yeah. Yeah. So we we've all, we ha we've all agreed that the zoning board does not need to be a player. We yep. all agree that the MPIC in some form or fashion should be a player at least to start the conversation. And that doesn't have to be said or decided. We're just going to be a part of it and we can drop off when we feel like we've handed it off well. Yep. Yep. The bullets all make sense because they're very specific. Yep. The references to the goals made sense. So really the only thing left was, as Ashley put it, to start the letter saying, this is why we're doing this and actually end it the same way. Because that's really how you, when you write something, you start out saying, this is what I want. Here's how we're going to get there. And as a reminder, this is what I said I wanted. And then we're done. Yeah. Signed, sealed and delivered. And if it ends up being Rick and Ashley, because, you know, we want representation, but not 11 of us, even though three of us are already going to be there. <laughs> and that makes perfect sense as well. Yeah. Right. And then just, then Laura can go off on vacation. <laughs> Does that make sense, Rick? Yeah. It's, well, there is one thing typographically I want to change. Um, there was a change made. We We first said that you know, some of the recommendations were complete or in progress. Others hadn't been done yet. And then a change was made to put some mathematical numbers in here. So the letter now says of some 106 recommendations, approximately 55% have been completed, 12 or underway, 33 or in progress, 14. Some have yet any action taken. So I guess the first thing is, I understand the difference between or underway or in progress. That seems like the same thing to me. Mm, I can explain well, that. Okay. Well, I'm just saying just for clarity, I think if we just said of some 106 recommendations, no. 12 have been completed, 47 are underway or in progress, and 47 have yet to have action taken. No. <laughs> so if I can explain ongoing. So to me, ongoing means that they will never be completely satisfied. Mm -hmm. So, for example, one recommendation may be that the town should pursue um, preservation of open space that meets with um, the town's priorities. That will forever be the history of the town of Northborough until there is no land left to save. Mm -hmm. So anything that it, I have identified as ongoing in my opinion, means that the town is currently doing it and will continue to do it to the end of time. Yep. If if it's in progress, um, my interpretation of in progress is that it's currently underway and I expect that it will be completed at some point within the period of time that the master plan um, holds for, which is 10 years. So, so then, that has a period at the end of the sentence and ongoing does not. Right, except the, the, the text doesn't say ongoing, it says underway. 
or like underway. Between underway, underway, and, huh? underway has a period. It's the same as, uh, you know, in progress. So, but we could probably, if there are two different terms used, we can streamline that. Well, if we say of some 106 recommendations, 12 have been completed, 33 are ongoing, and 14 are in progress. But not 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 thirty three are underway and fourteen are in progress. Underway and in progress mean the same thing to me. I can see where ongoing is a different mm -hmm. category. So if we change our our underway to our in our uh, ongoing, uh, I think you might have changed one of my terms that I used. Maybe no, I'm just reading. I'm reading, I'm reading the last letter you sent out before Amy's changes. Yeah, I, I think. I used his exact wording. Whose exact um, wording? But now that I'm looking at um, the the actual plan itself, there is an ongoing. There are several ongoings. So. Yeah. Those should be classified here. Well, I'm not sure at this point. So there's underway and there's ongoing. Right. So we'll get rid of in progress. Yep. Okay. So are the numbers different than what's in the letter right now? Is ongoing not 33 at some other number? I'd have to count it out. I yeah. Well, can we do, would, can we just take the numbers that, out? Based on that, Lori, I would actually change one of the NCH four from underway that I had put into ongoing. Okay. But they're going to have a copy of the matrix attached. They will. Yeah. And and just so you know, uh, this is still being updated. So. Um, there was uh, attempts to get Scott Charpentier to time, chime in as well as uh, school superintendent. Mm -hmm. So I know um, Michelle has the notes of uh, what the school superintendent said, but it isn't reflected in the spreadsheet yet. And she hasn't yet heard from Scott. So that will be incorporated. So these numbers will change. Yeah, but when does the letter become final? These numbers are always going to change. I wouldn't send it out until the spreadsheet's final. So That's she great. said she was going to work on it next week. But Julianne, I think you've got a target date. There's some meeting you guys have coming up where you want you said it'd be good to get this letter before the select board, before some planning meeting you've got coming up. So, oh, our goal meeting. So we have a goals meeting July 29th and goal setting for the select board. And then August 1st, we have what is Tim is describing as a financial summit where select board is meeting with appropriations and financial planning. So if if this letter, you know, could come out, well, actually, probably, would it be beneficial to have the meeting before any of those? Um, I, I, I think it's Im important that we get the request for the meeting before any of those. But that's that that should be no problem, right? I mean, July twenty. Yeah. Like I said, Michelle said that she would speak with um, or try to speak with Scott next week. Of course, he's very busy, so it's sometimes a challenge to pin him down. On the other hand, is the matrix that important to setting a meeting date? Mm -mm. Well, if we're including the matrix, then I would say yes, because the letter says enclosed is the matrix. Right. Well, we can We can include the matrix, but if we don't reference by count the status of projects if we just right. say you know that that certain projects are complete certain projects are ongoing certain projects are in progress and certain projects have yet to be started 
And doesn't matter what the matrix says at the point the letter goes out, you don't have to, the letter doesn't have to compare to the numbers in the matrix. So I would just take all the numbers out. I can just reword that sentence to just say that the projects are in different statuses. And then whenever we attach the matrix to it, it'll show that's the case. And when they people look at the matrix, they can see which have been completed, which are ongoing, which are in progress, and which haven't started yet. And we don't have to have a mathematical relationship between the letter and the matrix. Right. So is that I okay, Lori, if, if I take out those numbers? Yeah, I that was uh, Gene that wanted the numbers added. Oh, Gene's not here to defend himself anymore. <laughs> Gene's okay. out. But the important you know, thing is, is that we get this started. You know, right. there's, and it, it, yeah, I agree. That will be discussed at the meeting. We'll have all of that information at the meeting, but to to organize the meeting, we don't need that information yet now. But the matrix should definitely be attached when this letter goes out. So I guess where we are now is I can make that change um, I can change the wording a little bit from the select board may want to consider to more of that the MPIC recommends that the select board and planning board meet jointly to discuss these situations and that um, uh, the MPIC, um, something wording to the effect the MPIC will also be represented at at least the initial meeting and then take kind of the general purpose of the letter and put something up in the first paragraph that basically highlights the reason we're sending this letter in the first place to sort of stress, you know, what we're trying to accomplish here. So basically the two changes would be changing the may want to consider something a little bit stronger, but respectful and moving something up into the first paragraph to better indicate the reason we're sending this letter to strengthen that a little bit. And I think that's fine. So when do you think you would be able to send it out? So what I'll do is I'll try and get the letter done in the next day or so. Uh huh. And then I think when Lori comes back from her vacation, she can attach the most current version of the matrix to it. And the letter can go out um, first week in July. July 1st is a Monday, right? You'll be back on July 1st, Lori? Yes, July 1st. Because our next select board meeting, I, I'm pretty sure, is July 12th, where we will be continuing to discuss ARPA money. And... I know several of the members, at least two of us, um, to want, want money to go to economic development. And I think that this letter speaks to the need for, for that, obviously. That's pretty clear. So having that letter before our next meeting, even if it's just the letter and no meeting, will be, you know, good good evidence that we we sh we really should allocate money for ARPA for economic development. Was I very confusing there? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean that. I think one of the points a letter is making is before we spend a lot of money on economic development. We need to get a better feel yeah. for between the select board and the planning board where that emphasis should come and how it should work. Um, and once again, referencing some of the specific economic development goals in the plan that come out in the letter here, what's the position of those two boards around ED21, ED24, and ED41 and H24. Those are the ones that not a lot has happened and some decisions need to be made about. And then I think based on understanding where that's going, it'll be clearer as to how best to support moving forward on those. Or if the boards decide that ED24 doesn't make any sense or it's 
it made sense in 2016, but it doesn't make sense anymore. That could have some bearing on where this is all going. Or if the board says all five of these goals are outdated, don't make any sense anymore because, you know, 2016, 2017, 2018, the world looked one way and now it looks completely different. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the first question the letter is trying to get at. What is it that we want to do? And it's not up to the MPIC to make that decision. It's really up to the select board and the planning board that have the responsibility to sort of make those decisions. And then knowing that, how do we go about and do those things? And if the answer is all of these goals make a lot of sense, we really need to do them, then I think the recommendation to spend money on them and to get a staff position to coordinate it, put some sort of committee together to work with the staff support, all that, all that makes sense. But at least there's a, conscious decision has been made that we really want to do these goals. They make sense. We want to do them. This is the time frame we want to do them in, and this is how we have to get organized to do them. So I think it's good to set some ARPA money aside for economic development, but I think it's also the point of the letter is let's figure out exactly how we're going to, how we're going to respond to these goals. And if the goals make sense and we want to do them, that gives us a clear path as to the support we need to get them done. I think the concern is it's not clear to our committee, you know, where the board stand. And we've heard there's been just some kind yeah, of noise know, right? around in general, you know, um, do we need housing or don't we, we need housing? Know. How much housing do we need to make the downtown more viable as an example? There are people on these boards that I think feel that, you know, it's a stretch to put any more housing downtown. It's going to cause more problems than it solves. And yet the master plan and the and the downtown revitalization plan said housing in the downtown is a critical component to success. So that, that's got to get wrestled to the ground between the decision makers as to do they agree or disagree or is there some in-between position there that needs to be done. Yes, as an example. So, so I think it'd be a good idea to get this letter in front of the select board before the next time they meet, because it's going to be asking the select board to do something. Mm -hmm. You know, how far down the road you want to go in terms of setting aside money. I think it. I would never disagree with setting aside opera money to spur economic development, but I think before it gets spent, we need to have a clearer picture as exactly what we're going to spend it on and why. Anyway. Lori, if there were some uh, typographical things in the uh, matrix, would I just bring those up with um, Michelle? Yeah, if you could. Okay. Um, so that way when I come back from vacation, it's uh, almost ready to go. Okay, easy enough. I think what I'll do also is I see Ashley's not with us anymore. I'll send Ashley an email tomorrow and ask her to send me some wording that she would like to see at the beginning of the letter to sort of express, you know, how to position this so that I can uh, get some input from her because she was coming on pretty strong tonight about wanting to move some of the thoughts in the end of the letter up to the front of it. So ask her for some specific wording she'd like to put in there, and I could factor mm -hmm. that in. Mm -hmm. And Rick, yeah, Rick, do you just want consensus and or a motion to by us to just say you can do this without reconvening us again? That well, I think that's a, that's, a, the... that's a sense I'm getting from the committee tonight. Yeah. Is that I should just, based on what we've heard tonight, just make these changes, get this letter in next week, to Michelle, so when Lori comes back next Monday, a week from Monday, she has a letter. I think it's important to attach the matrix, so take the current status of the matrix at that point, attach it to it, and get it out uh, to the select board and the planning board. And as we've agreed, it's not going to go to the zoning board. Sounds good. Yeah. Any other suggestions or comments about that? Mm -mm. Okay, well, it's uh, nine o'clock. Um, let's pass over and come around again on a 
discussion about what else is in the matrix and what we want to work out. I've got a couple of things I want to talk about, but let's do that at a subsequent meeting. The other thing, I, we've got minutes to vote on, which we can do in a minute. The other thing I just want to ask about is uh, meetings of this committee in the summer. Right now, um, we'd be scheduled to meet the third Thursday in July, and then again the third Thursday in August. I'm just wondering, based on people's schedules, do we feel that we want to meet continually in the summer? Do we want to skip the July or the August meeting based on who's going to be where and who's doing what? Is there anybody that would have a, a, a feeling we ought to skip a meeting this summer or should we just go ahead and continue to meet third Thursdays? Any input on that? I mean, I, I don't well, I, know. Sorry. Yeah. I don't know if anything timely wise is going to change for us if we don't meet, but I'm happy to be able to meet based on what's needed. Right. Not going to say the same. I think we could skip one of the two, just trying to think whether it's more important that we come back in July based on, you know, what we're asking of the select board, because they're going to be making a decision in July or August, right? Mm -hmm. And then maybe we can pass on a meeting in August because some of us may be at their meeting. Mm -hmm. Lori, what's your perspective? Do you think there's a reason we have to meet both both times in the summer? Um, well, I only have one planner board meeting in July, and that's going to be on the 16th. Um, so uh, I, I suppose I, I could report on the 18th what happened at the planning board meeting on the 16th. Um, and then, you know, we could schedule that joint meeting, assuming we've heard from the select board. When are you meeting with the select board? You said the 12th? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Is that a so, Monday? So do you think at that meeting uh, they would act on whether or not to, to schedule the joint meeting with the planning board? And then uh, we can work on the actual coordination after that point. So do, do you think it would be more valuable to meet on July 18th versus August? July July 18th would be the third Thursday. MPIC. July 18th for what meeting? For the MPIC meeting. Is that the third Thursday? Yes, I believe so. Yes. And the 12th of July is a Friday. Oh. <laughs> okay, so. Um. I, I, so I think it's the, it must be the second or third, let me say, third Monday in July. That's the 15th. It's the 15th. Okay. So, so it must be the 15th. I have it written down someplace else. Can you hold on one second? Lori, what would you be reporting from the 16th, from the planning board meeting on the 16th? Um, so what we could put on the agenda is um, kind of this discussion. Okay. They would have received the letter by that point. And then um, we could kind of just uh, get confirmation from the planning board that they're regular, to, but that they're okay with having this joint meeting. And then if I hear the same from the planning board, I mean the select board, then yeah. we can just coordinate schedules and figure out some time in August to hold that meeting. So, but would that necessarily require a meeting from the MPIC or is that something that could be communicated through email? We could also communicate that by email, sure. Okay. Yeah, so maybe it doesn't make sense for us to meet again in July because the pieces to the puzzle aren't even going to be on the table yet. And Not we're only going to find out from solidified. the select board on the 15th, the planning board on the 16th, why will we meet on the 18th? Yeah. Okay. Right. Sure. All right. So let's plan 
that our next meeting will be the third Thursday in August. If for some reason something develops, yeah, that causes fine. us to need to meet sooner than that, Lori can inform that and we can see if we have to get together in July or not. But for now, let's plan to not meet in July and come back in August, see what happens. Okay. Uh, August 15th. Yep. Yeah. All right. The last item is the uh, minutes from May 23rd, which were distributed. Are there any changes or comments to the May 23rd minutes? Hearing none, may I have a motion to approve the May 23rd minutes as submitted? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Vote? Okay, thank you. Uh, Julianne? Aye. Millie? I abstained. I wasn't at that meeting. Fran? Aye. Gene Kennedy? Oh, he's not with us anymore. <laughs> Rick Lee votes aye. John Campbell? Aye. Jen Tolman? Aye. May 23rd minutes are approved. Okay, um, I'll try and make progress on the revised letter. Get that done for next week. Um, and then um, when Lori comes back, that letter will be distributed with the whatever the current status of the matrix is the first week in July to the uh, select board and the planning board. And we'll take it from there. Lori, you hear any feedback from either board or... You know, if uh, there's something you hear, uh, Julianne, that's, you know, has some bearing on uh, the MPIC, you know, you can let Laurie or I know and we'll decide what to do next. Okay, thanks. Okay, well, thank you all tonight. We're sort of dragging our way down the road here, making progress and uh, <laughs> try and stay you, cool. Man. We'll see you soon. Thank and you. and we, we should adjourn. adjourn. Please, can Laurie, we see vacation. some of you at Porch Fest on Saturday? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I'll be at Church adjourn? at 3.30 with some buddies of mine playing guitar if you want to listen to some music from the 60s at 3.30 on Saturday at Trinity Church. All right. We love right music. After I get out of work, Rick, I'll be right over. Okay. <laughs> It'll be a great show. Okay. It's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Thanks, right. everyone. Right. Good night. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Bye.